But it's great to be with you this morning. It's fantastic. We can come and worship the Lord, isn't it? And uh, Pastor Luke is preaching in Ramoth this morning, so you've got me. But uh, it doesn't matter because it's God's word. That's the most important thing, isn't it? And uh, if you want a title for the message this morning that God has laid on my heart, it's Lost and Found. Lost and Found. Are we going to be looking in Luke chapter 15? <laughs> this is going to be a disaster. No, I think I'll leave that down. <laughs> okay, so this is a conversation about lost things in my house. Um, is there anybody like raspberry jam? <laughs> yeah, like, I like raspberry jam. I'm not so fast on strawberry jam, but I like raspberry jam. So um, my wife is superb. She orders all these things and uh, puts them in, in, the, in the cupboard. And this, is, this is a normal conversation every couple of weeks. When I go in the fridge and it's all gone, I say to Helen, Helen, is there any more raspberry jam here? And this is the answer. This is, you probably can understand this. Though. So she says, it's in the cupboard, in the, in the top shelf where it normally is. <laughs> so I go over to the cupboard, I open the cupboard, I'm looking through all these tins and everything everywhere. Normally things are dropping out on the floor and I'm looking everywhere for this jam. I say, hell, there's no, there's no jam yet. <laughs> there's no jam. Yes, there is. I bought the new one. It's in the top shelf. So I keep looking and I keep looking. And I said, there's none here. So this is the normal thing that Helen says to me. She says, if I got to come out there now and look now, I won't be happy. <laughs> So I said, I'm telling you, I've looked high and low, there's no jam here. So, so she comes into the cupboard and a miracle happens. <laughs> she opens the cupboard that I've been looking through for 10 minutes and making a mess. And right in front is the jam. <laughs> so she, she says to me, it was right in front of your eyes. So I think she's really good at hiding things from me. <laughs> Because whenever I go there, like, I never find anything. I don't know anybody, any, anybody identify with that story today. There's a few nods, yeah. So she's really good at hiding things right in front of my eyes. But, uh, and I'm normally quite sheepish and embarrassed after. Thank you, Helen, <laughs> for finding that for me. So that's something that's lost in my mind. But I'm, I'm delighted we found it then because I can have jam on my toast or bread or whatever. So I'd like to look this morning at Luke chapter 15, which talks about lost things. And it's an amazing thing, and it's Luke chapter 15, and it says this, and I'll just go through it. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathered round to hear Jesus, but the Pharisees and the teachers of the laws, laws muttered, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. I thought, wow, isn't that amazing? Jesus was talking to a crowd of people, and there were tax collectors and sinners, the Bible says there. People who were ostracized, pushed out from society. As we know, tax collectors, today is completely different, isn't it? But then they were working for the Romans. They were Jewish people working for the Romans. And unfortunately, everybody hated them because of that. And also, it says, as we know from the story of Zacchaeus, they used to cheat, they used to put money in their back pockets when they were collecting taxes. So the people, the public, hated them. So nobody bothered with them. So the only people who bothered with tax collectors were tax collectors. But the religious people here see Jesus talking to these people. Not only talking to them, he says he welcomed them. And he used to go and have food with them as well. They ostracized. And I thought, wow, what a savior we have. What, how brilliant Jesus is, isn't it? All those people who felt, oh, I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. Jesus says, it doesn't matter about that. What I've done for you is good enough. Isn't it? And Jesus breaks through the barriers. And he's still the same today, isn't it? He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if you feel Jesus, God doesn't love me, that's not true. God breaks through the barriers. He loves everyone. You know, the, the gospel is good news for everyone. Not for just certain people, not for uh, nice people. It's for everybody. We all need a savior. And Jesus breaks through the barriers there to find all people. And I love that at the start. The, even, even the Pharisees said, this man, Jesus, welcomes sinners and eats with them. I thought, what, a, what an example to us, isn't it? How Jesus blesses everybody, isn't it, this morning? 
And he goes on to explain about Jesus' heart because they didn't get it. They didn't understand God, although they were supposed to be religious and knew the Old Testament. They didn't understand God's heart. That was missing. Because if they did, they would have been doing the same. They would have been mixed with everybody and welcoming them, wouldn't they? And he wants to explain God's heart to people, to you and to me. And he does this by using parables. And when I was in school, I remember my teacher, Mr. Barnes, saying a parable was a, a heaven, sorry, an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, like there's a few people like Mr. Barnes. You know, he was lovely. Um, and it's an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. So Jesus says this. Then Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the 99 in the open country and go and look for the lost sheep? until he finds it. And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I found my lost sheep. I tell you, in the same way, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous people who do not need to repent. What an amazing story. You know, that shows, we always think about the sheep, don't we? But that shows the heart of the shepherds. The shepherd's there one day. He's brought all his sheep in for the night and he's got them all together. A big flock of sheep. You can imagine the noise. And I go up the country park regularly. And when they're all together, there's a real noise. You can hear them for quite a way off. All going, meh, 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 and all calling to each other. And he's there counting them. One, two, three, four, five, 80, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99. Ooh. where's number 100? And he goes, I can imagine he's probably done it a few times, isn't he? Because they're all moving about. One, two, three, four, 99. Uh, no 100. Where's number 100 gone? So it says, Jesus told that story that he leaves the 99 safe and then he goes off to find where that other one's gone. Now he could be risking his life. Who knows? He could be going dark. He could be risking himself to go and find that sheep. But eventually, you know, in my mind, I can imagine the story as a little noise. Me, me. This poor old sheep all on its own. And then the shepherd, whoa, come here. And I love what it says there. He picks the sheep up and puts it on his shoulders and carries it back home. Isn't that a lovely picture? What a picture that is. And not only that, he's so delighted. He goes and tells all his friends and everybody. You know, today you'd pick up the phone. Uh, you'd, you'd be fi- uh, Facebook or whatever it is and all the other things. I found it, I found it, I found it, I found the sheep. And it says there, he rejoices because he found the sheep. What an amazing picture. And you know, that's a picture of God's heart. You know, every one of us, God is looking for you this morning. If you don't know him, he's looking for you. He was looking for me and I was eight years old. I was a lost sheep. The Bible says this in Isaiah, we all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us turned to our own way. So that means we've all got lost, but we all need to be found. And the one who comes to find us is the good shepherd, Jesus Christ. And you know, he comes to each other us and he says, it says in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. God loved you and me with everything he's got that he gave his only son and whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. You know, we're not robots this morning. We have a choice. God comes to find us. Jesus is here. You're hearing the gospel this morning. He comes to find us, but we can choose. He's a loving God and he says, you have a choice. I, I, you can choose whether you accept me or reject me. But you know, I really, really encourage you this morning to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. So he can pick you up on his shoulders through what he'd done on that cross, on the cross of Calvary. He picks us up out of our sin, and he takes us home to be in his kingdom. What an amazing picture of God's love for each and every one of us. Then Jesus goes on, and this one's called the parable of the lost coin. Or suppose a woman has 10 coins, she's got 10 coins, and she loses one. Doesn't she light the lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls all her friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, 
I have found my lost coin. In the same way, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of God over one sinner who repents. What an amazing story there. And when you look into it, uh, into a little bit more, she had 10 coins. This lady had 10 coins. And you may think they were two pences or they were silver coins. It could have been 10 pences. We think they are, but they weren't. These coins, it says, were a day's wage each. So I, I, I googled um, how much the average wage is in the UK. And it says roughly about 100, just 100, 115 pound a day. So if we call it 100 pound, each of these coins was worth a hundred pound. Now, if you lost a hundred pound, I'm sure you would be looking for it as well, wouldn't you? So this woman lost this coin in a house. And we may think, oh, don't think of it of a house like we live in today. These had earthen floors, so soil on the floors. And at that time, they didn't have windows or so to speak, if you think of it. Uh, they just had the door, maybe some slots for so some light to come in. So it was dark in the house as well. So you've got earth all over the floor and it's dark in there as well. And that's why it says that she light, lights up a lamp. So not a torch. <laughs> she had a lamp, so probably uh, some oil lamp. And then she sweeps the floor because it's covered in dust and everybody's been walking in and out has brought all the dust and you know all the mess. So this coin is lost in the dirt. So she's looking in the dirt and she doesn't give up and think, oh, do you know, I've looked for three hours. I can't find that coin. Where is that coin? It says this. She searches carefully until she finds it. She doesn't give up. You know, a lot of us would give up and think, oh, I can't find that. And it just reminded me of um, a story when I was younger, when I first started uh, a job years and years ago in a company called AB Electronics. I worked in Porth. And... Um, in those days, it was uh, not that long ago, but maybe it wasn't it, I don't know. Uh, on it, every Friday, you used to have your pay. And what they used to do was, you'd have your pay docket, and they'd put a big staple through it because they'd have the notes in there and a staple with it and the change. And you had to go up to uh, the lady who was giving out the, the pay, and um, you had to sign that you'd received it safely. And then you took it home. And I remember uh, driving from Porth, and I had a habit of putting things in my back pocket. I don't know if you do that. And I was driving through Porth, and I just went like that. I thought, where's my money? And I was in my car, my mini. <laughs> not a posh mini, not like the ones today, Grace. <laughs> this, this thing was uh, like a go-kart. <laughs> um, and I thought, where on earth has my money gone? You know, it was my w week's wages. And I actually pulled over on the side of the road safely. <laughs> and I, I looked and I couldn't see it anywhere. And you know, all that journey home, my heart was in my throat. Where is my money? I couldn't find my money anywhere. And uh, when I got home then, I thought I'm going to have to look through right throughout this car. And what had happened was it had fallen out of my back pocket. And the old seats like that had a little gap. And it had actually gone down between... The, the two side, the top and the side of the seat, and had gone down and got stuck in the springs. But I tell you what, I was absolutely delighted when I found it. You, <laughs> I found all my money. I was absolutely delighted. And can you imagine when that woman found that coin? I know I can empathise with that. Yeah, she found the coin. She was so delighted. She goes and tells all her friends and neighbours. I want a picture there. And you know, again, the picture was not about a lady losing a coin. The picture was God's heart for you and for me. You know, today, uh, we could be lost in our hearts. You know, we could be in the darkness, in our sin, covered in the dust of sin in this world. And you know, we just sit in there, unaware of life around us and what spiritual life is at all, in darkness. But you know, God is seeking you out. God is looking for you today. He is looking for you. And he doesn't give up. He is looking for you. He does everything. It says he, uh, the lady was sweeping the floor when she lit the lamp. And you know, God's word is a lamp to our hearts. You know, God is shining his word in our hearts today. He's shining into our hearts and sweeping as well, clearing things away. Where's that coin? Where's that person? Where they? Come to me, come to me. You know, and that speaks of work, doesn't it? It says he's the lady was carefully looking. She was putting all her effort into that. 
And you know, God did everything for us. When Jesus died on that cross, he's saying, I, I want you, I'm, I'm finding you. Come to me, come to me. He's got his arms open to us. And it says there, you know, when we give our hearts to the Lord, when we ask the Lord Jesus into our hearts, I was only eight when I did that. Do you know, it says there that there's a huge party in heaven when I give my heart to the Lord. When you give your hearts to the Lord, there's a huge party in heaven. And it says there, even the angels, in the presence of the angels, in front of God, everybody celebrates. Yes, you've been found. You've been found. You've come home. One imp- incredible picture of God's heart of persistence. And even to Christians, I'd say this today. You know, we have a privilege here this morning of being part of that. God's work, shining the light of the gospel into other people's lives. You know, I will say, if I hear the gospel as a child, I was only eight years old, but when Pastor Jennings faithfully preached here, I give my heart to the Lord. And we need to spread the word of God and we to our family and to our friends. People know need to know that Jesus is looking for them to rescue them and to save them and bring them into his kingdom. We need to know that. So it takes work as well. There's effort. Uh, it says the woman kept looking. She swept. She did things. And you know, we, that should be our ultimate priority as Christians in our life. Life is short, isn't it? And time is short. Is to reach those, our family and friends around us with the good news of the gospel. Reach the Lord lost. And third in the parables is the parable of the lost son, or we also know it as the par- parable of the prodigal son. Now, uh, a number of years ago, we went on holidays to America, and I remember we were coming back. We went with Lee and Rob and Grace and Will, and we were coming back, and there was a few hours to spare. So I don't know who suggested going to a shopping mall. <laughs> Probably Lee, because <laughs> he loves shopping. But we, we thought we'd stop a few hours in a, a shopping mall because we had quite a few hours because we had to get out of the hotel and then go to catch the airplane. Um, so I can remember Helen went off with uh, Lee and Grace and, and, and I think he went to a shop somewhere. And you said to me, Nat, you stay with daddy. <laughs> so Nat was with me. So I, I can't stand shopping, sorry. <laughs> so my, my only thing I like is music. So I, there was a nice record shop there. So. Um, the, they sell records again now, don't they? So I went into the record shop and took Nat with me. So I was, it was CDs then, okay? So uh, I was looking through all the CDs like that, and Nat was standing by the side of me, and they were all out on these big tables. And I was looking through them, and I thought, oh, that's a good one. And I turned around like that, and Nat had disappeared. And I went, Nat? Nat, where are you? Nat? I couldn't find him. And, you know, after about 20 seconds, you start to panic, didn't you? I thought, where's he gone now? You know, he was standing right next to me. I was looking high and low for him. I went around the shop. I went to the security guard at the front. I said, have you seen a little blonde-headed boy? <laughs> I said, uh, he was with me. He said, nobody's past me. So I knew he was still in the shop somewhere, but I was panicking. Five, 10 minutes went by, 15 minutes went by. Helen came back, you ready? Uh, no, I can't find that. What? <laughs> you can imagine, can't it? <laughs> oh, oh dear. <laughs> so the panic sets in and he, where is he? I mean, it, we were really panicking. So we couldn't find him anywhere. Honestly, look, hi, no. So we had all these plans. You stay out here, I'll go over here, do this, do that. So anyway, I went back into the shop where I was, was standing. And next thing, people. <laughs> He crawled out from under the table where I, uh, where all the displays were. And do you know, my first reaction was just to grab him and hug him, Nat. <laughs> and then he had a row after. <laughs> but the relief in my heart, because I'd found my son, he'd, he'd only been lost, 50, well, he hadn't been lost, he was hiding from me. <laughs> but um, he was under there. Do you remember that, Nat? <laughs> Good. <laughs> I do it. Uh, but it says this, Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons. The younger one, and this was unusual for the time, said to his father, Father, give me the share of my estate. So give me my, all my money that's due to me when you die, basically. So the father divided his property half each. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had and set off for a distant country. And there he squandered his wealth in wild living. 
After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in the whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country, he sent, who sent him in the fields to feed pigs. Now, obviously, as you know, for the Jewish faith, that's a big no-no, pigs, isn't it? Uh, they don't <laughs> go anywhere near them. But this guy was there, and he longed to fill his stomach with the pods the pigs were eating. He was so hungry, he thought, I'd even eat the pig's food. He didn't, but nobody gave him anything. And I love this verse. It says, when he came to his... Can you imagine this guy? He was like this. And when he came to his senses, he said, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. So he made a plan. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. And this is the verse that's brilliant that shows God's heart. It says, but while he was still a long way off, it says his father saw him. His father had been waiting for him. Every single day he was looking for him, waiting for him every day. And his father, this is amazing, God's love. It says his father saw him and was filled with compassion, filled with love for him. And the father, can you imagine, in those days, this was very, very different to their culture. The fathers never did this. But his father ran to the son, threw his arms around him, and he kissed him. What an amazing picture that is of God's love. Then the son, you can imagine, the son felt so ashamed. He was probably in rags. He probably didn't smell very good. He looked terrible. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Dad, I'm so sorry. Please don't call me your son anymore. Look what I've done. I've brought shame on you and the family. But what an attitude the father had. And this is God's heart. But the father said to his servants, quick, bring the best robe. Give him the best. Put it on him. Put a ring on his finger. Put a, a fantastic ring on his finger. And put sandals on his feet. Build, bring out the fatted calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. Not give him a row. Not say, go away. Let's celebrate. Give him the best. Let's celebrate. And this is the amazing words for he says, For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and he was found. And they began to celebrate. And we know there's a little bit more of that story, but it says even at the end there, and when he's talking to his other brother, as we celebrate, the father says, and be glad, because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and he is found. What an amazing picture that is, isn't it? And it just struck a, a, a chord. You know, we could have been Christians for many years, uh, you could, and maybe in our hearts, we've gone cold away from God. You know, it's interesting in that parable that Jesus told, that obviously this young man's heart had gone to say, uh, this, sorry, this young man's heart was saying, I want to go. I want to go away from you. Even before he actually asked his father, he had a plan in his head. And he thought, right, I don't want to be a part of this family anymore. I want all my money and I want to be out there. I want to be gone. And you know, sometimes in our hearts, we can be in church for many years, or we may have gone away from church, but it starts in our hearts going away from God going cold to God, and, you know, we make our plans then, and one day we'll go. And it's a very, very sad day, isn't it? And basically, this young man wasted his life. He had all our money up in smoke, it says, on my living, gone. All the money was gone. And then he had nothing, and he was left, and he was, if we can put it spiritually, he said he was starving, he had no food. But if we've gone away from God, you know, our spiritual lives will be starving. Our spiritual me will be starving. But I love this. It says he came to his senses. Do you know, when he was on, on rock bottom, he thought, what have I done? What have I done? I brought shame on my family. But even, even the pe people who work for my father got a better life than I have. She so said, I'll go back to my father. And I love that then. He's going back. Can you imagine him walking like this? Oh, what's my father going to say to me? I've wasted, look at the state of me, look at, look at all this, but I have to go out desperate. And he's waiting for the huge row of his father, and probably for his father to say, you know, if that was one of us, would we say, 
that's it. Away from me, you've, you've done it. You've squandered everything. I don't want to know. You made your own. You made your own mess. You go and lie in it, basically. But his father had a totally different attitude. His father every day was standing out that garden. Oh, is he coming home today? That's all he was praying. Oh, I'm praying my son will come home today because the love in his heart for that son was incredible. Do you know that's the love God has got for each one of us? You know, and if you've gone cold in your heart, you may think, oh, I can't go back to God. He, he won't forgive me. That's rubbish. God is waiting for you. He's waiting with his arms wide open. Whatever you've done, you know, it says the young man, he says this, Father, I've sinned against you in heaven. So he realized, he recognized what he'd done. He said, Dad, I'm sorry. And you know, we need to say sorry to God if we're in that state. Lord, sorry, I've wasted my life. I've turned away from you. But you know, the Father's there saying, give him the best. And you know, God wants to bless you more than ever. When you come back to him, God will bless you in abundance in your life. And what I love about that as well is it links up to a, a prophecy in this year, two years ago, that the backsliders will return. You know, and there could be people listening on, on uh, uh, the social media today or whatever. And you know, if you've gone away from God, God's got a prophecy for you that he wants you to return. Not the life you're living in, starving spiritually. He wants to give you a full and abundant spiritual life. Come back to him. You know, he was lost but is found. You know, Jesus wants to reach out his arms to you in love and say, come back to me this morning. So, just to recap today, lost and found. Maybe we want to call it lost equals perish, found equals saved this morning. And you know, as a Christian, if you, uh, as a Christian you're here this morning, the brilliant news is you're a found sheep. You're a found coin. You're a found son or daughter. Isn't that amazing? And if that doesn't make you feel happy this morning, I don't know what will. You know, we should be joyful because it says there, the Father's heart is joyful towards us. Uh, when we got saved, he was uh, absolutely incredible and full of compassion for us in his love. And I was in, uh, over in the Ronda on Friday with work and I was driving back up to a place called Penrice to come over to Ferndale and all that. And I drove to the top of the mountain. And as you drive to the top of the mountain, you can see the whole of the valley below you. It's a fantastic picture. And then I came back over to the Mahdi mountain and you can see the whole of this valley below you. And it was amazing. And do you know, it struck a chord in my heart. All those lost people living down there. Loads and loads of lost people. And yet as Christians this morning, we've been found. See, this came to me this morning. I was out walking the dog. And this this is quite a joy, our joy for being found and God's compassion in our hearts should lead us to action. And it, the Lord just dropped that into my heart. Joy plus compassion equals action. And it just touched me. Like the woman who worked hard to find that coin and the joy she had and the, when she found it. You know, that's how we should be as Christians shine in the light, as the woman did, of the gospel into people's hearts. And if you don't know Jesus today, you know, you, maybe something's resounding in your heart now saying, I feel lost. I don't know Jesus. I've been living my life, but I, I, I really feel lost in my heart. Do you know, Jesus is looking for you. God is looking for you this morning, and his arms are outstretched to you, saying, come to me. And do you know, when I was a young child, that's all I said was, Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you for saving me from my sin. Come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. As simple as that. No big deep theology or anything like that. Just crying out to God, God, I'm lost. Please find me. And God found me. And he put his arms around me. And I've been his ever since. Isn't that amazing? That offer is open to everyone. No matter what you've done, who you are, you don't think you're good enough, that's rubbish. None of us are good enough. Jesus has made it right for us. So if that's you this morning, ask the Lord into your heart this morning. And finally, maybe you're sitting here and your heart is miles away from God, like that prodigal son had gone away in his heart and then he actually outworked it. Don't go down that route. You know, say, Lord, forgive me. I've been cold in my heart here, but I want to come back to you. And what an amazing picture God's waiting for you. And he wants to put his arms around you and give you the best and bless you in all his ways.